Please welcome to the stage Sebastian Niles of Salesforce and Secretary General Dima Al Yaya of the Digital Cooperation Organization. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, first, uh, we want to thank everyone for you know, gathering and choosing to spend your time today uh, for this very important uh, discussion. Um, you know, Secretary General, as we think kind of broadly around how do we, you know, yes, seize the incredible opportunities ahead of us, right, with respect to artificial intelligence and agentic AI systems, you know, and the like, that we also have to do so in a way that's mindful, right, of the risks. And there's sort of three big buckets of different ways to grapple with that, right? One might be guardrails, right? Another might be governance. You know, the third might be guidance in different sets of ways. But let's start with that, that second topic of, of governance. Um, you know, one of the recommendations uh, that's come forward is, you know, should we have different types of regional or international, or even global AI offices, you know, as such? You know, perhaps even, you know, sort of with the United Nations, right, taking such an approach. Um, if that type of approach were to be taken, whether it's the United Nations or the UN AI office or another you know, type of context, how would you see that kind of office, though, working with such an important organization you know, like yours? And some of you may know the Secretary General, this is the first time this particular organization has taken such an incredible leadership role, right? And recently, and you being appointed uh, to the Secretary General role. Well, thank you so much, um, oh, first, for the opportunity and being here. Um, uh, to discuss a very uh, ambitious and exciting topic specifically. Um, but if I can give, shed the light on first, what is DCO, the Digital Cooperation Organization, and my, that might reverse to why are we taking this road actually. So if we look at the rapid growth of the digital economy right now, last year alone, 2023, it was 16% of the overall GDP globally. Expected uh, in WEF reports by 2030, digital solutions will be adding more than 70% to the global GDP. Now that holds with it huge opportunities for countries specifically to diversify their economies. But the thing is, the agenda of transformation, digital transformation specifically, is huge. And therefore, looking at infrastructure to human capital development, reforms in policies and regulations, adoption of few new emerging technologies like AI, quantum, blockchain, and other technologies, no country can do this alone. They need the support and help. Also, it needs investments, uh, attracting the right investments, working on outwards investments as well. So therefore, countries need to work together. A competitive advantage in one country can be a solution for a challenge to another country. Therefore, like-minded nations came together and said, well, we bet on digital economy to be the economy for us and the economy of the future. And we have to support each other. We have to help each other to accelerate that growth and harness this opportunity. Therefore, they came together, developed the Digital Cooperation Organization to be the connector, the, the advocate, and also the advisor on advising them on how to t go forward when it comes to taking decisions in digital economy. Mm -hmm. One of them is AI governance. Um, and going back to the, to, to the question, uh, I think it, in general, we, even if there was an office in the UN or any other regional offices, I think it's going to be a very big challenge for us to, under, to uh, govern as of now if we are now still understanding the technology and that rapid, uh, uh, that rapid change in that technology. I think the role of this office should be creating new methods of policy making. We should start innovating in policy and how we take uh, such kind of actions into standardization and then into policy making and uh, uh, regulation. Um, personally, I think that every nation has to work on their AI governance and then look at a regional level and then an international level and uh, with consensus on specific topics. But I think when it comes to AI, um, uh, no size fits all. <laughs> no, very much agree. I, I also think it's a very inspiring but also practical vision you know, that you outlined around 
digital solutions, digital transformation. And I think there's a kind of implicit um, concept in what you said, which is about ecosystems, yeah. right? I think it's, you know, at Salesforce, you know, we too have a strong view about how do you build ecosystems of trust, ecosystems of innovation, ecosystems of customer stakeholder su success, ecosystems of equality, ecosystems of sustainability. Um, what do you see as the role for um, you know, international uh, companies you know, like Salesforce or otherwise for what role uh, you know, the private sector could play in that vision that you outlined, uh, whether it's with respect to artificial intelligence or any of the other very important priorities that need to be attained you know, at a global, regional, and local level? Well, um, an amazing question. Innovators are the engine for the digital economy. We can't neglect that fact. And what we need to do uh, as international organizations or as nations is to enable and empower them to grow. But the thing is, is that there is a gap in communication when it comes to between the innovator and the governments. And here is where in DCO we are addressing this issue, where we are looking at the private sector and the global uh, um, uh, pr providers or technology providers uh, to be part of the discussion where they are observers to the organization. And what we do is when we come and work on a policy, for instance, they are in the forefront of these discussions with the governments and we co-create and co-design together. So we truly believe that they have to be part of the discussion and they have to be part of the initiatives for them to understand what is the concerns of governments, what are the priorities of the governments and the requirements as well, and vice versa. Also for governments to understand what are the new technologies and how can we help and support in the expansion and the growth of these companies as well. Um, uh, one example is, um, which is a win-win uh, uh, kind of situation, we have the, the uh, digital uh, um, foreign direct investment initiative that we're working with our countries, where we go into a country and we look at the, their business environment and see what is their competitive advantage and how can we amplify that competitive advantage and direct investments toward that objective. Uh, uh, and here is where we connect the supply with the demand. So we provide that data after assessment of the countries to the private sector, the likes of Salesforce and others, that can help and support in the growth and the, in, uh, and the uh, acceleration of the transformation of countries. Now, when we look at AI specifically, and we look at the role of the private sector, I think as they are the innovators and they're improving in the modules and the, and the AI modules and, and, uh, uh, and solutions, uh, government have to be part of that discussion. They have to understand where the technology is going for them to help actually and support in more agile and nimble policies that would help that innovation to grow and not decrease the speed. Well, I think several you know, key points there. One is the opportunity to have this technology or really all technologies ultimately be empowering. Exactly. Right, yes. and be easy. And you know, kind of how do we upskill, you know, reskill, but really for all of us become either hyper AI literate, right, or on any, you know, you mentioned quantum or these other you know, sets of areas. Um, you know, when you talk about the role of the, of the private sector, the path forward around some fresh ways or frameworks for collaboration. Right, civil society, private sector, government, academia, right, you know, research, you know, and the like does very much feel key. Um, it's also, you know, I think, sort of, you know, my, my point of view that robust sort of self governance frameworks, mm -hmm. right, uh, you know, demonstrating that businesses are going to act responsibly, right, how business can be one of the greatest platforms for transformation, for innovation, but also for, for positive change, and this sort of self governance, as it were can inform, right, governmental frameworks. It can complement, you know, governmental frameworks, you know, as it were. But when you think about the risks, right, and you think about, you know, I mentioned guardrails, governance, and, you know, guidance. When you think about risks, when you think about guardrails, you know, including, you know, we're very excited at Salesforce, Agent Force, around agentic AI systems, they're also more complex, right? But are there any particular guardrails that you, that are top of mind for you? <laughs> Well, if I'm going to uh, shift the discussion a bit and talk about what's top of mind, mm. is the AI divide. Now, we're talking about this advancement, and you've been talking about the advancement in Salesforce when it comes to AI. 
but we have 2.6 billion people in the globe that are even not connected. They're off grid. Will they have an opportunity to even experience AI? You have countries now that don't even have the capabilities for them to address AI for their pro productivity. So this is, a huge, this is a huge factor that we have to even look into. With AI advancing and with other countries improving, the digital divide will increase. And we have now a new divide, which is the AI divide. Now, if you look at a, just an algorithm of ChatGBT, it consumes 25 times energy than a Google search. An AI image created uh, can consume energy more than uh, uh, charging your phone. So imagine countries, developing countries, that even have electricity as a challenge. So how are they going to afford such kind of technology or even introducing that? That's from an energy perspective. If you look at semiconductors and, CP and GPUs and, and the lack of supply on a global level, such kind of countries will be left behind and they will not have the uh, capital to invest in AI. Therefore, we're gonna lack uh, uh, local content. Therefore, they're gonna continue being consumers and not producers. And therefore, the, uh, the, the, the power, let's say, divide will increase. Uh, and uh, we're gonna have, unfortunately, a big portion of the world not being able to um, benefit uh, positively from such kind of effective technology. So this is where in, in, uh, in DCO, we're working heavily on that computing power while now we're looking at the regulation and policy, but also we have to look at infrastructure as well. And here's where going back to what I mentioned about other countries having the, the competitive advantage and how can it be a solution for another country. We just launched recently the Gen AI Center of Excellence with the partnership also with the private sector uh, to help and support create different nods where it's a mo on a multilateral perspective, several countries can benefit from the infrastructure that is going to be developed in one country. And experts from like the likes of Pakistan, Nigeria, can access the computing power in Saudi Arabia, for instance, create their own local content and create IPs from such kind of infrastructure. Uh, it's very sobering thoughts. Uh, and what you're also highlighting, I think, is one, the imperative for connecting the unconnected mm -hmm. to empowering right, the unconnected once they're connected, but then three, not just sort of uplifting you know, the areas or the, the communities, but how to just really bring forth and include all of these different regions and areas into the innovation, into the brainstorming, right, in closing, right, whether it's these divide gaps, but also becoming increasingly, increasingly competitive. Um, uh, but here's, a, here's a question for you. I mean, do you continue to see gaps in even the representation in the global representation, whether it's particularly you know, from the global south or more broadly, gaps in that engagement and representation and opportunity? Oh, definitely. And that's why we exist <laughs> as DCO. Uh, definitely, we do see lack of representation because the, uh, and, and why should we have more representation? Because the challenges are different. They're totally different and the needs are different. And even when we, we give even the opportunity or, or, a, um, uh, or, or a seat on the table, the, the needs are going to be different and the asks, asks are gonna be different. Now we represent 16 countries from mm -hmm. Asia, Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. 800 million in population, 10% of the whole, whole uh, population. But with these 16 countries, there are differences. There are parities and, and we, have to, we have to address them. The needs are different and also the objectives are different. So yes, I, I do see that it is really important for us to have different voices on the table, especially when it comes to all the value chain because the value chain of innovation, there are certain countries that do not have a seat on the table but they are a very, a very big factor when it comes to like raw material for uh, semiconductors mostly come from Africa, but do they have a seat on the table in representation? 
You know, I mean, on, on, on this point, um, you, know, you mentioned diversifying, right, potential sort of national economies. Uh, and look, certainly, you know, the largest enterprises, the largest, uh, you know, uh, companies, the largest countries, right, will have these as priorities and perhaps have resources. But do you also have a point of view, taking this a slightly different direction, though, is how do we use technology or digital transformation to expand the entrepreneurial, right, ecosystem to small, medium-sized businesses, right? Those types, the communities, the families, the regional opportunities there. Is there an ecosystem waiting to be developed and invested in and, and resourced in that broader area too? Oh, definitely, definitely. I. I always return surprised in every country that I, that I visit, coming from uh, Pakistan to Nigeria to Rwanda to Bangladesh to Jordan, who is a hub of innovation. Uh, I was surprised to see in Africa seven um, unicorns, five of them coming from Nigeria. Imagine. Uh, yes, there is huge potential to be tapped into in terms of innovation. The needs, as I say, is different, and therefore we should look at what are the uh, several uh, uh, countries need the capital and need the investment, need more VCs to go in and, uh, and help and support in uh, believing in these communities and, uh, and providing some seed uh, uh, investments. Others need more mentorship, acceleration, and others need the opportunity. Where are the opportunity? And this is where we um, we did a very small demonstration, which is amazing. We brought in 160 com companies or startups from mm -hmm. Series A and above. Most of them actually are are deep tech, deep tech startups. Um, and we brought them all together in front of uh, uh, 160, and we brought them all together. Um, in three days, they raised more than. Uh, Fifty-five million dollars just in in seed investment, uh, and some of them partnered together, got access to the likes of Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and 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 Pakistan to do business. So that's e expansion by itself, and giving them that just opportunity to uh, to capital and markets. Mm. We've definitely seen that as well through our Salesforce Ventures arm and looking at yeah. globally. Well, uh, if everyone doesn't know, the Secretary General has long been one of the leading tech pioneers in this area, but also one of the leading champions uh, for women uh, and, you know, in this area. So really excited that everyone was able to hear your perspectives and love to see you know, where the private sector can do more with your organization and beyond. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate being here and thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.